So hello to everybody tuning in. This is our episode nine of our Sound Off Music Talks inspiration series. Um, Sound Off Music Talks is presented by Music Calgary. Um, we'd like to acknowledge the projects funded in part by Factor and the Government of Canada and Canada's private radio broadcasters. Um, I'd also like to take a moment to recognize that Music Calgary is located on Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. Um, today, we're talking with Stacy Kerslake, a music marketing and project manager um, for a variety of different <laughs> artists and different companies that she's working with. So hello, Stacy. <laughs> Hi, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to, to talk with you. Yeah. And it's nice to virtually meet you. <laughs> yes, it's nice to meet you too. Um, yeah, so I'll just leave it to you to give a brief introduction of yourself, your work, and, um, and we'll go from there. Perfect. So I have been uh, in the music industry for over 10 years. I, um, I have an array of experience, which I'll elaborate on, but uh, to give my kind of backstory, I uh, currently live in Toronto, but I grew up in a very small farming community north of Barrie uh, called Elmville. And uh, growing up, I grew up in the country with uh, my two older siblings and my parents. And so uh, growing up in the country, we were kind of left to our own devices in terms of entertainment. So I really relied on my siblings to, you know, help entertain me, play, play outside, that kind of thing. Um, and so it was really, we didn't go to parks. We didn't do a lot of what suburban kids do. So um, music was a big part of our, our home. My mom uh, grew up with a musical family as well. And she taught piano lessons when I was younger. I took piano lessons, but I was awful. I was an awful musician. And uh, I think I knew from a young age that I would never pursue music in that way, um, where my sister did. And she's a very talented uh, saxophonist, uh, where my brother and I stuck to records. That was our thing. Uh, my brother is six years older than me. And I was largely influenced by him because he was watching uh, MTV all summer long and he would babysit us in the summer. So MTV was on all the time. And uh, my dad would play guitar and we would have campfires with neighbors and that kind of thing. So music was always around. Um, and again, like I didn't have a huge interest of playing it. I just loved it and I was really moved by it. And uh, from a really young age, that's when I knew I had this kind of pull towards music and art. Um, I was also an artsy kid. I went to art camp and always was drawing and, and writing and, and both things that I still love to do. I love to paint. So I, I knew I had like a creative bone in my body. It was just kind of a matter of time to figure out what I wanted to do with it. Um, but for me, that kind of aha moment was um, I was 10 years old and again, like in our country home and MTV was on and I saw uh, this music video where these huge like helicopters were coming down and it was like fuzzy guitars. And I was just like, what is this? Like, this is really curious to me, really interesting. And it was Oasis and they had just released their um, single, do you know what I mean? And I remember just being like so floored being like, how can I be a part of this? Like there's helicopters in this music video and these guys look just so cool and mysterious. and again, being from a small town, I had never known anything like that. And it was really interesting to me. And I really, I don't know, that was kind of the light switch moment for me where I was like, I have to be a part of this world. I don't know how, especially yeah. I don't have musical <laughs> talent, but yeah. I have to be a part of it in some way. And so that was, um, you know, a, a memory that I've really held on to my entire life. And obviously yeah. through my career, and it's really motivated me in different ways of always, you know, chasing that curiosity, trying to figure out how to be a part of it, especially when you don't have the obvious skill set. Um, mm -hmm. so that for me was a journey that I was on um, throughout my high school and university career. And then even still now, I'm just still always chasing what, you know, brings me curiosity. Yeah, you'll have the closure when you work on a music video with helicopter. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You'll be yeah. like, okay, like, I have reached I'm satisfied my, now. My exactly. Yeah. I feel I feel you because I'm not a musician as well, mm -hmm. but music's always sort of been a calling to me, and it's like I knew when I was like 13, 14 that that was like mm -hmm. 
what I wanted to do or just like the world I fit in really well (laughs) or the people I wanted to surround myself with. So I fully relate to that Mm -hmm. because that's almost a everyday question you get when you work in music oh do you play something oh You're like, totally no. yes <laughs> and you, you make an interesting point about fitting in because that was like mm-hmm. that's a huge part of my story too is you know growing up in a small town I never felt like I fit in and it wasn't something that I strove to either like I, I was totally fine with being on the outside I had really great friends I had a really supportive family um, and I just always knew that I didn't fit there and not in a tragic sense. Like I just, it really was just, I knew that it wasn't a place that I could see myself settling in. And mm-hmm. high school was very much the same for me. I was really involved. I was in choir and band and again, like off at both, but it just was a way for me to be a part of it and be associated with like that creative part of me. Um, and then when I went to university again, like in my high school, there wasn't a lot of opportunity or anyone really pushing me saying, you know, you have this creative outlet, you should really pursue it. Cause I wasn't great at drawing. I, you know, I was awful at playing music. So I went the very safe route and I decided to major in history. And I, again, it was, I, I was good at it. I was like, oh, I'll be a teacher. Kind of again, emulating things that were around me. And when I got to my first year at Brock as a history major, I looked around and I was like, these people aren't like me. Um, I need to be in a place where like, this is my opportunity to find my people and like find the people that I fit in with and feel comfortable around. And then when I made my switch to um, media communications, I was like, okay, this is where I need to be. And I'm with people that motivate me and are inspiring to me. And so I felt really good about that decision. Nice. So you got like, you took marketing in university, but that Mm -hmm. was sort of like, well, how you felt you're in to working with music. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, it took me a while to get there. I mean, I immediately made the switch in uh, my second year to media communications. And I called my parents kind of crying being like, I want to switch majors. And I felt that there was a lot of pressure. Um, but they were really, really supportive. And they were like, if this is what you want to do, then you need to do it. And again, like I worked with a lot of kids who were in film, because I crossed over a lot in my in my classes with film students there was music students and then there was business students and I was more on the media business side of it but there was a lot of kids that wanted to be film directors and wanted to be producers and music producers and all these like creative things and I really was motivated by them but also like I don't want to do that either so I had to still find my own way Um, And I knew that I wanted to work in music and I just wasn't really sure what my capacity could be. And that's when I really got into marketing. I really, I took a lot of advertising classes where we would look at really interesting developments that have happened over years and years of marketing, but then also looking at really topical things like Super Bowl commercials and really dissecting them and looking at them in a really interesting way, which I felt was really cool. And I was inspired by and passionate about it. And then um, I decided to join the Brock radio station, the, the campus radio station. And immediately they were like, oh, we'll give you your own show. That, that, would, that could be cool. And I was like, okay, yeah, like I, I could host my own radio show. And I was really excited about it. And I was awful at it, like really, really bad. <laughs> I just found it really hard to uh, talk to nobody. I felt like no one was listening. I mean, I had a really awful time slot. It was at like 11 o'clock till 2 a.m. on a Tuesday or something crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so it was just like, when I was going downtown, the radio station at that time was off campus. So I would go downtown and it was dark and, you know, no one was around. So it was like, no one is listening to me on this time. And so um, one of the produce or one of the program directors pulled me aside and very politely was saying, you know, I think maybe you'd be better versed in marketing. Like you're just not really loving the, the hosting thing. And I was like, thank you. I really didn't (laughs) want to be here. So that's when I started doing like a lot of, foot to the ground marketing, just printing posters and flyers and going to all the the clubs and stuff and just promoting certain shows. I would record uh, some of the PSAs and commercials, which I really liked and ended up helping me later in my career as well. But um, I just started getting that knack for marketing and promoting, which um, kind of fueled my fire. So nice. That's awesome. So that's like a great resource for like anybody in communications Mm -hmm. that might want to explore. Yeah, for sure. Canadian 
universities have their own station, mm -hmm. I would assume. I do. And I learned, <laughs> yeah, and I like any time that I've talked to people in the past of, you know, what recommendations to take, mm -hmm. utilize anything that's on campus, especially the radio station. When I was at Brock, they did launch a TV station and I was involved with them for a little bit. Again, doing a lot of marketing yes. and a lot of like ideation things. Like we're coming up with ideas for launches on campus or certain groups on campus that were wanting to kind of share their message and their mission and what they were about. Mm -hmm. And I found that really cool too, because then I was becoming a problem solver, but using my creativity to really help like move their message forward. And that's when I really started realizing like, oh, this is really cool. I can still work with what I love and find a solution for it, but then also be so like a little bit removed from it where I don't need to have like a really crazy voice or a musical talent in some way. Like I just, that was probably the moment when I started to realize that there's a place for people like me and like you who maybe don't have the musical talent, but there's talent required in behind the scenes. Yeah, totally. Um, so you've worked at Dine Alone. That was yes. that was a long time ago. <laughs> ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so Thank no, you for time. reminding me. <laughs> what is time? <laughs> I know what is time. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, doesn't have meaning anymore. Um, no. But you worked there. So yeah. did you apply there, like after high or university, or while you were still in university? Yeah, so after my time at Brock, I did my postgrad at Western in arts management. And that was also another place where um, I didn't necessarily fit in. It was a postgraduate program where they only accepted 15 students. And I think that year there was nine of us. Okay. And a lot of them wanted to be in museum studies um, or curation studies. And then I was kind of the emo girl in the back being like, I like rock music. Okay. Um, and so but again, I had really great mentors who were teaching the courses and they were really kind of pushing me along and, and helping me achieve my goals. And so part of that was an internship. And I, and I knew that whatever my move was after Brock, it had to have an internship component of it. I just felt that it was going to be really difficult to land an internship uh, without that. And, you know, I was really, really lucky to have the opportunities presented to me. And so that year I applied to Dine Alone and Universal. And then I think I applied elsewhere, but I truthfully can't remember where. And um, when I went to dine alone, I was wearing my best outfit and I got made fun of for it later in all in good fun. But uh, I went there and, um, you know, pitched myself and they really believed in me and offered me the internship shortly after. And then I also applied for an internship at Universal as well. And I just felt like it was important for me to see how different an indie interview could be versus a major label interview. And I got offered the, the universal one as well, but I turned it down and I went with Dine Alone. At that time, I was like very, very motivated by music, especially like rock music and alternative music. And just knowing that I could work for bands like Alexis on Fire and City in Color, who I really loved in my university years, I just felt like that's what I needed to do. And I was very lucky that they offered me the internship. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. It, it makes all the difference when you like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so hard otherwise. Yeah. Um, and Universal being a bigger company might not have access to the projects that you're choosing or picking to work with. Yeah. You know what? It's interesting because when I went to Universal later on in my career and I saw how the inter interns were valued there and the experiences that they got, I kind of a little bit a part of me wanted and kind of regretted a little bit, maybe not taking that path. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like at Dine Alone, the team was really small when I was there. And so they gave me a lot of responsibility. And so I got to carry projects through from start to finish, which I might not necessarily have had that opportunity had I gone to Universal. So I got to work on really cool things. Like um, when I was there, the Sheepdogs had really come up and they were doing the Rolling Stone cover contest. And so I was really hands on with that, like leading the, the voting on Twitter and, you know, encouraging fans to vote. And also that was a time when um, Instagram was coming up, I think. And so I was really uh, a part of their strategy and getting them on Instagram and that kind of thing. But then also like I built really great relationships with people that I still have today. Like I got to learn how to write grants, which I never thought that I would have to do. And that really helped me later on down the line. But then also just, I was the merch girl for a lot of bands. Like I was interning, so I wasn't making money. So Dine Alone would send me, um, you know, to different festivals and different shows. And I would make 50 bucks for 
Gentleman Reg or the Arkells when they were just starting out. And that was huge for me because I was making 50 bucks and I also got to like meet the band and, you mm -hmm. know, be their merch person. So they really trusted me so much. And Joel and the entire team there was like integral to where I am now and like all the things that I've learned. Um, so it's interesting because I, and then I also worked for Universal, so I could see how that experience would have been really valuable too, but. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But yeah, learning everything is great because then you sort of narrow in yeah. on like yeah. specifics later on. Mm -hmm. Going to a bigger company, you might just be specifically working on a part of something. Yeah. Rather and also than just little, project. yeah, and little things too, like I would pack records at Dynalone. So I was putting, you know, the record in the sleeve and the sleeve and the, the next sleeve and bagging it and shipping it off. Nice. So then when I went to, you know, my, my future jobs, understanding that whole process and what it takes, I just, I just understood it a little bit better than maybe mm -hmm. someone coming in, not having to have that experience. Yeah. Um, and just also I got to wear so many hats and that was really integral to my growth and my understanding of different people's positions, yes, empathizing absolutely. with their positions and their struggles that they have every day. Um, and also yeah. I just think like I, a good project manager in that essence, because yes, exactly. you're like, oh man, I empathize for you packing those records. Exactly. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to do something that will make your life a little easier, a little bit easier. Or I'm going to communicate properly. Yeah. And yeah. not think you know what I'm saying, but you're actually yeah. going to know what I'm saying. <laughs> I yeah. feel the same. Like any and all experience is just like beneficial in terms of communication, mm -hmm. and like becoming better at it. Yeah. And since that's your job, that's great. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And but it also took, you know, at the indie label, I was really, really supported. And, you know, I had one mentor kind of pull me aside one day and he said, if you want to make it in this business, like you have to speak up because I was very quiet mm -hmm. when I started, I was nervous. I was like really afraid to make mistakes. And he was very much like, you have to speak up. You have a good voice. Like you're really smart. You're intelligent. You have great ideas, but they're never going to be heard unless you speak up. Mm -hmm. And that was really important for me just in terms of knowing that not everyone in the industry is bad. You can find some really great people who are going to support you and be a good ally to you. And, uh, it was hard leaving Dine Alone. It was really, really hard. Uh, but again, like whenever I run in from anyone there, like they're so supportive and, um, I've been, you know, able to make friends, which is really, really nice. Nice. Was the choice to leave just like a growth mood move or just like a change of, uh... yeah, it was, it was strictly growth. It's kind of funny okay. because, um, my internship was only supposed to be three months and I stayed for six <laughs> and then, oh, okay, nice. I had moved to Toronto for it and I, you know, was feeling really great. I had my own apartment here and um, enough money to float me through the summer. And then I ran out of money and <laughs> moved home. So I moved back home and then I was commuting down here uh, with the GO train a couple times a week and then also working at Starbucks at the same time. So I was really kind of burning the candle at both ends, but I really cared about Dine Alone and what I was doing there. And they cared too. And, and they were really motivating me to continue coming back and um, really respective of like my situation. And then they offered me a job. So um, that was like eight months later, I think six or eight months later. And so I moved back to Toronto, got my own apartment and again, felt like I was really hustling and making it. So I did that for almost a year, but prior to me getting hired onto Dine Alone, I was interviewing everywhere. I interviewed at Bell. I interviewed, I think I also interviewed at Universal and I also interviewed at Warner. And when I had my interview at Warner, they ended up hiring internally to a girl who is still a good friend of mine. And uh, anyways, I was fine with that. I was like, I'm happy at Dine Alone. It's all good. And then a few months after, the, I guess it was a year later, um, Chris Moncada, who is now at E1, he had called my boss at Dine Alone and asked if I was still there and if I was available for a position. And my boss at the time, again, really supportive. He was like, listen, there's no harm in taking a meeting. And that's something that I still say now. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll meet with him. I don't want to go to the major label. Like, there's no way I'm staying here. But then I met with Chris and he was really great. And there was, I just felt like there was a wealth of opportunity there for me. And so that's really what made my decision. So I ended up, I guess you could call it poaching, but truthfully, it was uh, a connection that kind of came around a year later. So then I went to Warner and started as a marketing coordinator there. Nice. 
Yeah, yeah. sweet. But I think that's a great move. <laughs> and yeah. the fact that your boss at Dine Alone was so supportive. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Shows the like, the honesty, which is great, you know? Yeah. Um, so then you were just like taking on projects and sort of leading the charge on marketing at Warner on yeah, at, at Warner, I was I was a marketing coordinator, so I was working really closely with the marketing managers there. So I learned so much about um, tour marketing and just um, outdoor marketing in general. Mm -hmm. When I was at Dine Alone, the budgets were very different. So we would do some a lot of grassroots marketing, but now I was kind of elevated and booking mm -hmm. TV ads and radio ads and billboards, which I had never done before. And so that really set me up for my time at Universal. Uh, just in terms of like preparedness, knowing what billboards are coming out when, what is required, leading and working with the graphic designer so that everything is made to spec. There were so many times where something would come back um, and it was the wrong size. And I just learned over and over again that like communication is vital to that kind of thing to make sure that your deadlines are met. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ordered product for all the artists. So any artists coming into Canada for their show, I would order product for. I made a lot of mistakes and yeah, uh, totally. learned very quickly <laughs> that you have to like double check the, the um, catalog numbers and all that kind of thing. Um, and so I, it was a huge learning curve for me, but again, I was supported by really great people that really built me up and, and made me realize like my potential. So then, um, <clears throat> as I got further into my time there, I started getting some projects that I would own and that was really prepping me to be a marketing manager. So I got to work a lot of country stuff, which is something that I was not really into when I landed at Warner, but something that I ended up loving. Um, and also metal and metal is something I don't listen to metal, but it's a genre that I really respect, uh, just because their fans are so loyal. So it was really eye-opening for me. And um, again, <clears throat> there was a marketing manager there who really pulled me aside and was like, I need help. I think you would be great at this. Maybe you can learn a little bit of publicity and understand what a press day looks like for some of these bands. And so I learned so much working with him on a lot of the metal releases and Roadrunner releases. And I felt like that really kind of gave me a leg up for when I went to Universal. And it really kind of set me apart um, I was very transparent of like, I'm not a metal fan, but I'm just like a fan of the genre and how it operates and it's mm -hmm. fandom. Um, and again, it was like that curiosity that was really driving that kind of skill set for me. Um, so yeah, at Warner, I learned a lot of basic stuff, but it was all things that were kind of just continually to build on my skill set. Um, and it really set me up for my time at Universal. Nice, that's awesome. The evolution of your career is very like one step at a time yes, <laughs> but yeah. like be open to like learning as much as you can mm -hmm. and just like jumping in head first really yes. yeah I think that's great that you were also like in situations where you could make mistakes I think that's like yeah, integral yeah. to like learning mm -hmm. you need trial and error and the person yeah. learns from making mistakes so if you don't let them they tend not to like learn that stuff so totally and also it's not about letting your mistakes define who you are and mm -hmm. again I think that's also I've learned from my leaders in the past in terms of like how I want to lead and I had really great mentors and really great leaders along the way just acknowledging that like it's okay to make mistakes mm -hmm. but correct it move on and like don't make it again kind of thing but it was all very constructive like I you know it was very rare that I ran into someone that made me feel like absolute garbage over a mistake that I made mm -hmm. and in the industry too there's a lot of people that were promoting big risks so you know sometimes you have an idea that you think is brilliant and it absolutely flops and that happened to me countless times but it was also the people around you building you back up after just being like you know you tried and the silver lining is this and that's really important to focus on so um, and that's how I continue to operate today is like, there's no crystal ball. Um, and I mean, if 2020 has shown us anything, it's that there's no crystal ball. So it's really, you know, you have to just kind of go with your gut. Um, and that's something else someone told me early on too, is like gut check. If you're not feeling good about it, just check in with yourself and, and see how you're feeling and then go with that. If you just cannot make that like logical sense of whatever it is that you're looking to make that decision mm -hmm. um so there's like been a lot of pieces of advice that I still follow nice. in my personal life and also just in my professional life too nice 
That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we can wrap it up. I like your story. It's very, <laughs> it's nice to hear because a lot of it is like aligned with how I've been sort of in it as well. Although I don't live in Toronto. So. <laughs> <laughs> Little town. I'm from Hamilton though. Oh, okay. Then Not I moved to Calgary, you know. Um, what would be, so there's lots of people that take marketing and communications. Mm -hmm. um, and if they feel like they're also not a musician, yeah. but they want to get into something, what would be your advice to someone looking to get into marketing in music marketing specifically? Yeah, for sure. I think, I think one of the best decisions that I made wasn't pigeonholing myself. Um, and just by going to a marketing degree, um, and that's really benefited me now. I mean, I was really lucky to get the experience that I did at Universal. And then I went on to MRG, which again, I learned so much when I was there. And now that I'm doing a lot of consulting uh, for other clients, I can pick and choose what I want in terms of who I want to work with. Um, but also my skill set is diverse enough that they're not just looking at my resume and saying, oh, you've only worked in music, so you won't know how to market whatever this is. Um, and I feel like that's really set me apart from maybe someone who took music business. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that is like my biggest recommendation is diversifying as much as possible, but also learning from your peers. Like when I went to universal, I was really shocked at the scale of the company in terms of what each different department and what they had to offer. And I immediately went to the digital team and I was like, teach me everything. I, I want to learn how to book a Facebook ad how to, and then Instagram as it has changed and evolved, I was like, teach me everything. I'm not gonna know how to build a website, but I wanna understand your language so that I can talk to you about what I want the website to look like in a way that you don't get frustrated and I don't get frustrated. So I really gravitated towards the people that I wanted to learn from. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do that at any job. And I think it's really, really important to just say like, hey, can I take you for a coffee and you can teach me about tour marketing or how to settle a show? Um, and I always, when I was at MRG, I would always say to my boss, can we go to buying school for a day? Can you like teach me how to buy a show? And he was really great about going through all the nuances of it. And I think it's really important to like never stop yourself from learning regardless mm -hmm. of where you end up. Yeah, totally. That's great advice. Diversify, try everything and yeah. get to know people's language because every, every role has a different way of communicating. So yeah. Being a good communicator means Everything. you don't have to do the job, but like learning the dialogue is yeah. ideal. Especially when you're working with artists. I mean, every artist is different in how they communicate. And mm -hmm. I feel like a big part of my success was learning that and paying attention to their language so that I could then give them what they needed in one email or one phone call versus like so much back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really important because in the music industry, you move at a very fast pace. Mm -hmm. And you can move faster and be more efficient if you understand and learn how to communicate with different people based on their skill set and their needs. So the conversations that I was having with production versus uh, press versus radio versus digital was very different than I was having with my marketing team. So that is really important and like being self-aware in that so that you're able to pull yourself out of like your normal language and kind of speak to everyone how you need to, to motivate them to get to your end result. And it's really, really hard, especially as you're like horizontally managing people that are twice your age, have twice as much experience as you, someone that is brand new to the business that doesn't have your experience. So it's, it's about being very aware of all those things. Um, mm -hmm. And just, again, it all comes down to communication. Yeah, 100%. Never shy away from asking questions and no. never also never shy away from asking someone if they need something more. Totally. Like always yeah. that call to action because yeah. assuming something yeah. in any business is like not great. And then yeah. music, there's just so many moving parts to every totally. project. Yeah. It's, it's crazy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on any given day. Yeah, exactly. um, but yeah, definitely been enjoyable to like hear your story and how You've, you've like sort of the evolution of mm -hmm. knowing when you want it to do it when you saw those helicopters yes yeah <laughs> to, like, <laughs> to now just sort of exploring it like fully yeah like, no it's been yeah. I've been really lucky I think a big part of it I mean is hard work and I've definitely worked really hard um, and I've also learned to acknowledge my hard work as well 
Um, but a big part of it is also luck. I think a lot of what I've been successful at doing comes with timing. I mean, I got to work with really great artists at Universal because there was a shift in terms of where people were in the company and uh, the marketing part department specifically. So I got in at a great time when like Sean Mendes was coming up and uh, Niall Horan had left One Direction right when Billie Eilish was about to pop off. So a lot of that is luck, but again, I was um, looked at as a trusted, responsible person and um, kind of gave me the ball to run with. And so nice. I'm very fortunate in my career, but uh, nice. always there's always something to learn, always. Yeah, every day. <laughs> every day, it every never day. stops, yeah. That's the best part about this, uh, maybe just the industry itself. It's yes. always moving and changing. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. yeah it's been very lovely um do you have a website you'd like to share or just point people to I know you haven't launched it I but. haven't launched it yet I yeah it's just we can been, follow up with you <laughs> yeah follow up with me in about a week's time but um yeah I do work with a nonprofit based out of Windsor but I obviously work remotely and um it's called build a dream and we work to create diverse and uh inclusive workspaces which I know is a very um a very big priority for the music industry in general right now um, but then I do have my own marketing consulting where I work with different clients and uh, that's been really rewarding so I have a, the very best of both worlds is I have the security of a full-time job but then I also have the freedom and flexibility to do a lot of marketing consulting and work with artists that I'm passionate about and also work with companies that I'm passionate about so um, but again I wouldn't have been able to make this decision had it not been for my experience and my willingness to ask a lot of questions um, and just even like meet people and ask their questions and get to know what they do um, but I really do think it's important to diversify and continue to involve and who knows maybe I'll be doing this in two years maybe I'll be doing something different um, I think it's really important to always just stay fresh and if you need a change do it it's really important to just you know we're only on this planet once and it's yeah. important to you know feel good about what you're doing and enjoy what you're doing it is still a job but it's really important to enjoy it too so yeah totally yeah. I know it's, you gotta love it it's a passion career <laughs> exactly yeah no yeah. matter how much money on this scale of whatever it's still passion yeah. still 100%. gotta love it yeah beautiful well have a great afternoon evening. thank you so much <laughs> and Bye, I look forward to hearing more. Yeah. Ciao. Thanks. Bye. Bye.